Today I want to show you 5 tricks that even experts in After Effects might not know. Emphasis on might. If you already know these, then you're a super expert. Hey guys, Sean K. Anderson here on the Olufemi channel. It's been a while. No matter where you are in your motion graphics journey, like a beginner or an expert, I think this video is going to help you. Whether all five of these are new to you or just one. The more intricacies we know about our tools and software, the better and faster at it we become. Okay, let's check out trick number one, looping your footage. So in a lot of animation work, you have renders or graphics or GIFs that need to loop continually in your composition. Now the old way of doing this would be to take your layer and dupe it up and then drag them all apart or maybe use some type of uh, script to stagger them. But not only is that slow, it can make things really messy. You have all these layers to mess around with and then you have to duplicate the effects, etc, etc. I'm sure you could pre-comp it, but there's a better way. Now this only works with an asset, not a composition. Go back to your project panel, select your file, and we'll go to interpret footage. Now this gives you some options such as conforming the frame rate to something that's a bit more American. I don't want none of that PAL stuff, I'm into decimals. <laughs> One of the best options is to loop your file. Let's do it 10, click OK, and boom! Look at that, fills the entire timeline. Now this doesn't work for comps or pre-comps, it really only works for PNG sequences or MOV files that you drag into your comp. Number two, updating your markers. Now let's say you spend all this time adding all these markers in your comp, and then you come back to your main comp and you're like, shoot, I need those in my main comp. It sounds kind of odd, but I've run into this before and I just needed everything to be consistent. And I remember being on a Creative Cow message board and the guy literally suggested, how about you go to each marker and just get out of there and then remark it. Like, nobody has time for that. I'm on a computer for freak's sakes. Fortunately, a savior responded and said, how about you try right-clicking, markers, update markers from source, and boom shakalaka, they are all there for you to use. Dual compositions. Going in and out of comps and pre-comps can be a real pain. Depending on what you're doing, you may want to see live updates for each tweak that you're working on. So that's going to require a little bit of panel adjusting. In the default setup, there's only one comp open. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to our main comp and hit this lock button. Now we're going to double click the pre-comp that we want to be working in. In this case, extrusion. Now we're going to also lock this comp. We're going to take this guy and we're going to go to the edge here. And there you go, two comps open at once. You may also wanna have two layer panels open at once. We're gonna click the tab and drag it down till we see this purple edge and let go. Bring things up so we can see a bit better. Now we can edit things from this pre-comp and get live results in our other comp. To get things back to normal, just hit the X, hit that lock. Just one second, before we continue, make sure you check out the Olufemi store for three packs that I've made. Scribble Accents, Scribble Fonts, and Film Grain Builder. Use these assets, textures, and transitions to plus up your edits. Click the link in the description to learn more. All right, back to the video. Number four, hiding layer controls. Layer controls are obviously very helpful. They allow you to visualize the edges of your layer, and they're not there when you render. They're just a guide. They also go away once you hit play. What happens if you have a whole bunch of layers and you're a bit more design focused and you just want to see what it actually looks like while you're holding it so you don't have to keep unclicking the layer on and off again. And all these lines out here can be distracting. So to toggle that on and off, we go to view, show layer controls, or the shortcut is shift command H or control shift H for PC. And I highly recommend using the shortcut because this is something you'll just want to do really quick on and off intuitively resizing parametric shapes. When you create vector shapes in After Effects, such as a square, a circle, you may notice that when you use the layer controls to resize it, your stroke gets squished and skewed, which is horrible. That's not what you want, you want to stay consistent. So the trick is to not use the layer controls, but instead toggle down the shape layer, the paths, and you'll see that inside the path is its own size parameter. And you can turn this on and off and now you can shape things how you want, keyframe it, whatever, and your stroke will be perfectly consistent. Ignore these scale parameters as well as the overall layers parameters and you should be fine. But Sean, I want to use the layer controls. That's what makes things so easy. Okay, I hear you, I got it. If this just is not doing it for you, it doesn't cut it, then right click your layer and convert it to a freaking Bezier path. Now we're gonna to go to our pen tool, double click this dot and look. It's a Bezier path. Nothing easier than a Bezier, as my dad always said. And that's it, wasn't that great? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, comment, download and save and watch for later. Burn it to a DVD, sell it at a video store. Oh, and if you have time, check out this other video where I talk about how I animated this short film about the Toronto Raptors and Drake, who's a wizard. 
in it. 